a secret location in Hollywood. It's the Tom Micah Show. Give me a darn break. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Micah. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Micah Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. I, uh, I found this story fascinating. Frightening, if you've ever stayed at UCLA Medical Center. <laughs> Look at this. California First Lady Maria Shriver, that's the wife of Arnold Schwarzenegger, is among more than 30 celebrities and other high-profile patients who had their confidential records breached at UCLA Medical Center, medical officials said. The woman responsible, whose name was not released, and I do not know why, because I'd certainly release it if I had it, is the same employee who sneaked into actress Farrah Fawcett's medical records, officials told the Los Angeles Times on Sunday. That worker was fired in May 2007 after UCLA learned of the widespread breaches, but patients were not notified, the hospital said. Isn't that nice? So let's review. In May 2007, which is almost a year ago, UCLA Medical Center knew, knew that celebrities who'd gone to UCLA Medical Center for treatment had been snooped on. Their medical records had been seen. And they didn't bother to tell any of the patients involved. No concern for their welfare, in my opinion. No concern for, you know... uh, Identity theft, tabloids uh, taking the information and running with it, which in some cases did happen. No concern at all. They just kept that a secret. That's right. Says here in all, the woman improperly looked at 61 patients' medical records in 2006 and 2007, according to state and local medical officials. These included Fawcett. Shriver, and 31 other politicians, celebrities, and other well-known people, the paper said. Names of the other patients were not disclosed. Let me just say this. As uh, a moderately well-known member of the Southern California community, I will never, never, ever go to UCLA Medical Center. Ever. Ever. And it's my opinion that anybody else who goes there is insane. Unless you don't care if people are snooping through your medical records. It's bad enough somebody snooped through the medical records. It's bad enough somebody had access to the medical records. But the fact that UCLA Medical Center kept this hush-hush for almost a year, unacceptable. Unacceptable. Says here the head of the UCLA hospital system, Dr. David Feinberg, apologized for the breaches and said the woman behind them had been a rogue employee. Great. Why didn't you tell us in May 2007, pal? The story goes on. Fawcett is battling cancer. By the way, it's anal cancer, in case you care. <laughs> That's because people have been digging around in her medical records. Information's out. Says here her attorney, Kim Swartz, said last, I I read that correctly, Swartz, said last week that after an employee at the hospital accessed Fawcett's medical records, details about her treatment showed up in the National Enquirer. 
But Feinberg told the Times that the hospital reviewed the fired employees' emails and phone calls and found no evidence any confidential medical information was shared inappropriately. Uh, listen, uh, Dr. Feinberg, I don't believe a word you say. If you had to keep this secret for 11 months, didn't tell any of the people involved? Every time you move your lips, I think you're lying. Says here, after being informed last week that his wife's medical records had been accessed, Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger issued a statement saying that, quote, a breach of any patient's medical records is outrageous. Why didn't he say that after we knew that Farrah Fawcett's records had been accessed, but not his wife's? It says here, besides being California's first lady, Shriver, former NBC Newswoman, member of the Kennedy family, well, yeah, well, what? you can't be doing that to them. Farrah Fawcett, who cares about her? The secretary of the California Health and Human Services Agency, Kim Belsha, said Sunday that her agency is very concerned about what appears to be a pattern of repeated violations. And she says that the state of California will be uh, taking action against UCLA. UCLA did not let state officials know about the breaches last year. Kathleen Billingsley of the Center for Healthcare Quality said a state investigator on Friday came across a document with the names of those patients affected. By the way, my prediction, you'll be seeing that list within the next 20 days. Somehow it's getting out. Trust me when I tell you. Feinberg said hospital officials initially concluded that alerting authorities and the patients involved was not required. Really? They are reconsidering whether to notify the patients because of the recent disclosure. It's because you got caught, Feiny. That's why you're reconsidering it, because your name now is in the L.A. Times, which is not where you wanted it to be seen. Dr. David Feinberg, people's uh, medical records being accessed and you hiding it from them. Yeah, you don't want your name out there, do you, Dr. David Feinberg? Well, Dr. David Feinberg, your name is out there now. And I'll tell you what, uh, one day I will need hospitalization. I will need medical care of some kind. And the last place on earth I would go is UCLA Medical Center. The last place on earth. Unless they reopen that, uh, what was that one they closed down in South Central L.A.? You know the one I'm talking about. Everybody was... Place people were dying out there uh, in the waiting room, and they, they <laughs> was that the Drew Medical Center? What was that thing called? I don't know. Doesn't matter. Don't call in. I don't want to know. Yes, it says the news of the snooping into Fawcett's medical records became public on Wednesday, a few weeks after the hospital announced that several employees were fired for peeking at pop star Britney Spears files. Schwarzenegger said he called on his administration to act after the Spears case had become public last month. All right. So there we go. Now, uh, you are anonymous. I've had one silly experience with this, but uh, it's an experience with this. I, uh, for many years, was a customer of the Arrowhead Water Company. And, uh, by the way, love their product. Love it. And uh, for whatever reason, when you sign up to have Arrowhead Water delivered to your house, they demand to have your home telephone number. Now, I don't understand why they would need your home telephone number. There are no emergencies. You know, it's not like uh, they're putting it uh, through to your house on a pipe and the pipe could explode. It's not like the gas company. Uh, there is no reason for them to have your home telephone number. Well, there is only one reason, and that is to market products to you to call you and sell you other products that you're not currently buying. So they insisted, insisted, insisted when I signed up, they had to have my home telephone number. So I gave the woman at Arrowhead my home telephone number. And literally about a month or two after I had signed up for the service, I get a phone call from some chick. Is this Tom Likas? Yeah. Hi, Tom. Um, I, somebody gave me your number. I just wanted to call you and tell you, like, I really like your show. And, you know, I was wondering if, like, I don't know if you do this, but I'd like to, like, meet you for a drink. I said, well, first of all, uh, before I, before I answer that question, 
who are you and how did you get my phone number? Well, I had to hem and haw a little bit, and I finally had to lie a little bit and act like, oh, oh yeah, I'd love to meet you. I just want to, I want to be able to thank the person who gave me your number. Who is it? Well, it turned out she was a representative at the Arrowhead Water Company who had been going through the files and found my home address and my home telephone number. So I told her that uh, I'd get back to her and, and just figured it would all go away. Well, the phone calls continued. She continued to call me at home, but now I was letting them go to my answering machine and I was saving them all. And ultimately, I called uh, the district manager for the Arrowhead Water Company, played him all of the messages, told him that my records had been accessed, and this uh, woman was fired from her job at Arrowhead. So much to their credit, at least, they got rid of this woman. But to the last day I did business with Arrowhead, I would not give them my home phone number ever again. And I resolutely resist giving my home telephone number to anybody for that reason. I have also heard from people who work for the Department of Water and Power. I've heard from people who work for uh, the gas company. Now, they're not dangerous. They just want to call me and say uh, they like my show or they'd love to meet me sometime or they want to know where I'm partying tonight. And this is the kind of calls I've gotten at home. So I know that if it's happening to me, it's got to be happening to people who are more well-known than I am in a big way. And I'm willing to bet that there are those of you out there who work. And since you're anonymous, you can tell us the truth here, okay? We're not looking to bust you. But I know there are those of you out there who work for utilities, work for hospitals, work for doctors, work for plastic surgeons, work for banks, insurance companies. I know there are those of you out there who have access to these big databases. Did you hear, by the way, there's now a problem at the IRS. Did you hear this? This is a story today. They found out that uh, dozens of people have access, like the highest level security access, and these are people who are not authorized and don't need to have the access, but they are all using it. So all that stuff, you uh, go to so much trouble to hide about how much money you make or who you work for and stuff. And it could be because you don't make much money or it could be because you make a lot of money. There's people at the IRS who might be looking at, at you and uh, taking this information and doing who knows what with it. I myself always wonder when I'm getting these weird credit card offers in the mail or offers uh, having to do with uh, various uh, business opportunities and what have you, how these people found my home address and home phone number. So I am willing to bet there are those of you out there who have jobs. Maybe they're the boring jobs. You're a data inputter. You're you know, one of these people who just types in names and addresses all day. Or maybe you are a customer service representative. Maybe you work for Visa or MasterCard or somebody like that. Maybe you work for one of the public utilities. Maybe you work for UCLA Medical Center or another uh, hospital. I know there are those of you out there who have access to this information. And I'm wondering how many of you actually dig in and uh, look at this stuff and what you do with it. Do you uh, show it to your friends? Do you bring it home and show it to your husband or your wife? Hey, honey, look what I saw. Look, it's Tony Bennett. He was in the hospital. You see what he had? Uh, I'm wondering how many of you have actually had this access and have done something with it. And who knows? Maybe some of you have done something even more devious. Maybe some of you have sold this information to a tabloid or to another publication. Maybe you've uh, sold it to somebody else. I don't know. I don't know what people do with the information. So if you work anywhere where you have access to people's home address, home phone number, their medical records, their financial records, their tax records, any personal information about people, okay? You have access to it, and you have misused that access. You've shown the information to people who shouldn't see it. You've printed out the information. You've d copied it over onto a disc, a CD or something, brought it home. Maybe you've shown it to friends. Maybe you've sold it to, uh, who knows, Dateline NBC. If you have had access to this kind of information, 
or you know people and you work with people who've done this kind of thing, we don't need to know the specific place where you work. I just want to hear the details. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. No, it's Tom. Man, you like the dopest cat on the radio. <laughs> you, you get a hood pass from me, so anybody will come to the hood. I got your back, huh? I love that. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. Show at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Big scandal here in Southern California involving UCLA Medical Center. It appears employees have snooped at the medical records of Britney Spears, Farrah Fawcett, Maria Shriver, the wife of Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger, and uh, as many as thirty other celebrities. Wow. So I'm wondering if you've ever done something like that. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Tony on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yo, what's up, Tom? Not much. Yeah, I was just calling about what you guys are talking about because I'm a mechanic and I work for a um, Highline car dealership on the west side. So we would get a lot of celebrities come in. And, you know, when I got the car to work on, I would, I would go through their stuff. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't, like, sell anything or anything like that, but it was mostly just just for personal, you know, entertainment. And, I mean, I don't really, I never done anything like that. I was crazy, though, how, how you were talking about a girl would call you. I mean, I had access to people's phone numbers and addresses and stuff, but I never did nothing like that, though. Uh, but uh, you know, what kind of information did you know about people? Well, I would, I would have, like, I would go through, like, the glove box and stuff. I mean, one time I actually seen a movie script of a real, you know, famous celebrity. And just pictures and, I mean, I would find weed, like little roaches and just all kind of stuff. Now, did you just keep that information to yourself? Did you tell other people about it? Yeah, I would tell other people, but I never, like, you know sold any information or did anything like that. It was just, you know, I'd go back and tell my friends and stuff. Really? Yeah. So you were looking I mean, you were looking at uh, just the stuff that was in their glove compartment. You didn't have access to, like, uh, their repair record. They might have their home address or their home phone number or something like that. Oh, yeah. They had the phone number, the address, and, you know, all, all of that. It was all on the repair order. Did you ever call anybody, like say, "Hey, I'm a big fan of yours," or "No, I sorry, never. wrong number," or something like? I get. By the way, I get these calls. Yeah, that, that's crazy to me because I've never done nothing like that. And these are pretty, you know, like you know, the Lakers and other other sports stars and actors and all kind of stuff like that. But I never, it never really, it, it was never something I really wanted to do, like call them and. You know, was that because you were afraid of getting caught, or was that you didn't want to lose your job, or is that because you just were respecting their privacy? Yeah, it was. It was just like I was just respecting their privacy. But I, you were going just, through all their personal things. Why stop there? <laughs> I know. I just just wanted to see. But as far as like taking it any further than that, it's like I'm cool. You know, I ain't trying to be calling y'all and doing all this and that. I so mean, you're I telling me which uh, which Laker players you know which ones smoke weed? No, no, no. I mean, not. No, I said like um, different celebrities. Right. I would, I would see like you know maybe they had a couple roaches in the ashtray, or you know some pictures or something in the glove box or cell. What phone. do you mean, like naked pictures? No, no, nothing like that. Just pictures of them. I never really, I never found naked pictures of nobody. But I, I seen a movie script though. You did. Did the movie ever get produced? I don't know. I don't even know. This was a couple years ago, but I haven't heard anything about the movie, though. Wow. Well, just, a lot of them never get produced, or they get produced with other titles. Oh, maybe. I don't even know, dude. Yeah. You didn't have any time to read the script, I guess. 
Well, I just I just skimmed through the pages. You know, I didn't like really just read it line for line. But I don't even know too much about like how movie scripts are are really written or, or whatever. I just kind of figured it was a movie script. I see. Well, Tony, uh, thank you for that. I appreciate the call. <laughs> this is what goes on, folks. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Victor on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Tom? I'm doing okay. So my ex girlfriend and her sister both work at a very well known bank, and they have both at one time or another accessed Paris Hilton's uh, credit card account and taken a look at it. And uh, they were telling you what they found in there. Yeah, they they told me the uh, the limit on the card and how much was on it, the what was owed on it. Did they tell you what she was spending money on? No, they didn't. T they didn't go into it that far. They actually uh, they actually got caught doing it, and they've been restricted now from that. But not fired. No, not fired. They got a warning, a verbal warning. I got to tell you, as somebody who has. I'm not as well known as Paris Hilton, but locally uh, in L.A., I've been around here for 20 years, and people know me. That would not be enough that somebody was restricted. And I'll bet oh. they never told Paris Hilton about it either. Absolutely not. I would I would expect them to be fired. Uh, that's outrageous. Yeah, that's, that's out of hand, but they didn't get fired for it. Wow. Yeah, I was surprised. Unbelievable. Not acceptable, and no, this is why no. I. This is why they, you know, they they act all miffed when uh, they ask you for the information and you refuse to give it. Yeah, but I wouldn't. I don't even give out my phone, and I'm I'm. I don't I'm, want. I don't, I don't give out my phone number. I don't give out my social security number, and uh, they try to tell me, well, we can't uh, start your account unless we've got your social security. I say, fine, I'll do business with somebody else. Oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. You know, exactly. Outrageous stuff, Victor. Thank you. There you go. The girls looked at Paris Hilton's credit card records, and they were, uh, now they have restricted access, but they continue to work for the bank. Very nice. That's the high esteem with which your private information is held. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Tara. On the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hey, Tom, how are you? Great. Uh, my story actually involves a very good friend of mine. We used to work at a well-known restaurant in Beverly Hills, and uh, there was a musician that used to come in, and she would wait on him a lot. But uh, he never asked for her phone number. So, strangely, he actually booked the reservation using his actual cell phone number, which she did get out of Open Table and uh, called him. He invited her to a show and then his hotel where they proceeded to have sex. <laughs> so it actually was a happy ending. No. Yeah. So if I give my number out enough, maybe somebody will call me for sex. Yeah, I'm sure you have no problem with that, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Open so table, I huh? Okay. Yeah, open table's dangerous. Don't use your real phone number if you don't want that to happen. Oh, yikes. Yeah. All right, Tara. Yeah, do look in there. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. Yeah, now you give a, a, a reservation to a restaurant, and they want your phone number and your credit card number, and they, they ask you all this information. It's like everybody's asking for information. It's insane. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Joseph on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Okay. Good. I worked for a storage company, and we would have actors, actresses, uh, politicians, uh, you know, renting space, and their their address and phone number, what they give us are in the file, and, and if they forget to pay for some reason, then the space gets uh, unlocked and, and locked over and their name gets put in the paper that uh, their stuff's going to be auctioned. And, you know, normally it's, it's a bunch of junk and two or three people show up, but you put somebody famous's name in the paper that they've got a storage space and we're auctioning their stuff. Suddenly 25, 30 people are showing up to, uh, to bid on their stuff. Yeah, I was, at the, uh, I was at the storage company that Heidi Fleiss used. 
Yeah. And there was her name in big letters right above her storage space. Uh, it's like, come on. I mean, I couldn't care less about Heidi Fleiss, but I mean, isn't there any privacy at all? What is this? Pretty amazing. Pretty outrageous. Yeah. Well, Joseph, thank you very much for that. Tom like this. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. So for you, you only get from woman you sex, and that's it. Yes, because that's what women are good for. Oh, oh my God. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show from Hollywood at 1-800-5800-TOM. Okay. Here in L.A., a big scandal going on involving the UCLA Medical Center. Apparently some employees have been looking at the private medical records of famous people. First day we heard was Britney Spears. Then Farrah Fawcett. And finally now uh, Maria Shriver, the wife of the governor, Arnold Schwarzenegger. And uh, about 30 other celebrities they have not yet named. And UCLA Medical Center, by the way, didn't think it was important to let us know when they found this out a year ago. <laughs> now they're re reevaluating their position now that they got caught. So I'm wondering if you've ever been in a position to have this kind of private information, if you've looked at it, if you've ever uh, done anything with the information, you know, called the person or sent them an email or, you know, sold the information to a tablet or whatever. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Marie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Marie. Hi, I actually just wanted to quickly tell you that your open-mindedness and your intelligence is just so sexy. Ooh. I, love it. I know. I had to get that in there. Love you. Anyway, um, I do work for a national slash international auto assistance company. Like, if you need help with your car, we come out and help you. And uh, uh, we have a, uh, access to a database where we can look up anybody and it's not financial or medical records but it does give information like your home address it says if you have children and which is very disturbing and i actually i didn't look up anybody really famous i'm not into celebrity too much but i looked up some ex-boyfriends and i found out who was married and who has kids and you know i just kept it to myself but you know, I think if that information got into the wrong hands, you know, you can look up where they live, and it does state if they have children, how old they are, what their names are. Um, and we are told we're not supposed to, and it's reason to be dismissed. But there's no way of checking it. Oh, my. Yeah, so that's another – that, to me, is actually more dangerous. Have you ever seen a famous person in there? Oh, yeah, well, you know, I just lied, and I said I didn't look up anybody famous, and I did. Ah. <laughs> I just lied. But, um, no, it's mostly sports figures. I'm really into NASCAR, and I looked up some NASCAR drivers, and like, something like that. I didn't say the company. Oh, name. or, <laughs> so, you know, or, anyway. or OnStar or whatever. Yeah, or whatever. But, um, yeah, I looked at some exes and stuff like that, and I'm like, oh, that's what happened to them. And actually, it just hurt myself. I was, like, crushed. I'm like, oh, damn, they went on, and I didn't move on very well. But, um, yeah, I'm thinking if that got into the wrong hands, because they really do give information about your children and their age and their names, and you can just show up. There's nothing preventing getting that information. You can even look up directions. You can get the on-site map of where they live. You can all kinds of get if that got in the wrong hands, you could stalk somebody. I mean, and there's they don't check on you. I have got to believe that somebody with a mental illness uh, has a job where you work. In fact, probably has a job where everybody works. <laughs> I don't 
have a mental illness, but, you know, there might be a couple people around me that might have. Well, I'm the kind of guy who, when I get on a flight, let me tell you what I'm thinking. And my producer just got back from the East Coast, uh, Gary. Uh, here's what I think as they're loading us on board and they tell us they're now going to close the hatch. I think to myself, you know, I'll bet even pilots get depressed. Uh, of course. You ever think that when you're flying? Yeah. Maybe he's just having a bad day. Maybe he forgot to bring the lithium on board. Oh, God. Yeah, I know how that is. But maybe yeah. maybe he just decides he wants to take us all down with it. Oh, yeah, and he could. He has that control. I mean, why? Why yeah. we are in complete denial. Why do we assume that every pilot is mentally competent, right. Uh, right. not depressed, has no right. mental illnesses, nothing? Right, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I did my own, you know, I was curious. And, okay, now that I'm going to get really honest, I did maybe call a couple, but I hung up. Like Aha! Uh -huh. like See, I get these calls. I, I get these calls. I know it happens. I know, and I, you know, I just hung up, but I didn't make a big issue of it, and I'm now I'm feeling guilty. But I'm just saying that people should really be aware of the information they are giving out. Do not give it out. Tell them, like you said, I will go somewhere else. Don't give it out because you never know. You never know. That's right. I'll tell you what, if I ever have ass cancer, I'll tell you what hospital I'm not going to. <laughs> okay. Well, I love you, Tom. You're very sexy. Thank you, Marie. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate the call. She'll be calling me tomorrow. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Mike on the Tom Likas show. Hey, Tom, you're hey. God. Oh. I got to let you know something. I, I work uh, out of town, and I work for uh, one of the largest title companies in the United States and uh, other countries, too. And uh, the talk around the break room a couple weeks ago was uh, a certain celebrity going into foreclosure. Uh, we'd say his initials MJ. So, do yeah. you think everybody looked up? His well, title, uh, yeah. What did? Wait a minute. His, they looked up his loan. I mean, I know his address because uh, I happen to have a, a second home somewhere near where MJ lives, or lived. Well. Let's just put it this way. The fact that he's in foreclosure, oh, he, by the way, he's no longer in foreclosure, but the fact that he was in foreclosure was no secret. But his the address of that property is on Wikipedia. It's it's out there. No, I understand that, but I, I don't want to release any other information that I hear around the break room. Yeah, I understand. Because, but uh, I can tell you this. There's several celebrities that have, uh, you know, Los Angeles metropolitan addresses, and they might have a Kern County address as well, or a Orange County address, or even a, get this, San Bernardino County address. And I know employees that are selling this information. Really? Yeah. You know, star uh, maps to the stars' homes. Uh huh. Come on, you know, 90% of that isn't true. Maybe Burt Reynolds lived in a house in Beverly Hills, but he's no longer residing there. But this is uh, this is genuine fact. This is up to the date county recorder information. Yeah. Oh, a lot of that information is dated. I I know it for a fact. A lot of the information in the star maps, and a lot of the information that's out there, and some of the uh, sources that people use to get this information, it, it's old. It is. It's very old. But we're talking up to the date trust deeds recorded, grant deeds recorded, interspousal deeds recorded. Uh. Celebrity divorced a couple years ago. Really? Now, yeah. Well, you know, some things, some celebrities are smart, and they will put those properties or they'll buy those properties with a family trust. Which, which is what I do. Federal tax ID number, so their Social Security number is not attached to any of the loan work or the title. Right. But there's a lot of celebrities out there that bought properties before they got real big and bad, and uh, their Social Security number is all over the place. Oh, my. And, uh, yeah, I know that there's celebrities that have uh, homes in, in the Big Bear area, Newport Coast area, Shady Canyon area, and all this information is just at the fingertips of every single title employee and every single title company in California. Nevada. I'll bet these people have never been to Staples to buy a shredder. Exactly. 
I'll bet people are going to the front of their homes and picking out their garbage cans. I heard a lady went and picked flowers off a property owned by a big-name actor that happens to be single, and she's got them pressed between two pieces of glass and a frame on her wall. Oh. That's a stalker right there. Ouch. Well, anyways, hey, Tom, thanks for the time. First time I ever got through to you. And uh, Dean's very professional. Mike, thank you for that. It's Matthew on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Matthew. Well, it was just kind of funny. I kind of heard the same situation, and I actually do work in a an establishment, and then there's a... Oh, there's a lot of access to, like, different files and so forth. Obviously, I can't say where I work or, or you know, where it's located, but, you know, the information is pretty much out there for anybody. But, you know, if everyone signs agreements and they, you know, they're, they don't talk about it. Right, blah, blah, blah. I'm, right, right. But sometimes in my off time at work, you know, people ask me what I do where I work, and they keep pressuring me a little bit for a name. But the circles are so small. You know, it's not worth risking it. But these people come in, they either use other people's names or they use, you know, their assistants. And, you know, nothing really too much interesting other than I can't divulge the name, but they do come in all the time. It's, it's, this, this, their information is could easily be leaked out if somebody were to go ahead and do that. Yeah, I think anybody who's paranoid that people are looking in their windows, there probably are people looking in their windows. <laughs> Well, yeah, there, it, it, it's not even just windows. I mean, social security numbers. I mean, all kinds of things. But, yeah. I mean, you know, you just let that kind of stuff go. But um, I did want to say that I am one of the only guys that actually work here and a woman, a group full of women, and it's absolutely, it's it's, it's interesting. So uh, It's interesting how so? Well, I mean, it's, a, it, it's basically I have to keep mindful that this is a job, that everybody in power over me is ladies. I respect every last one. I think they're great coworkers. Sometimes I just want to come and talk about the ball game. It doesn't happen. Wow. <laughs> Tom, can you blow me up? I certainly can. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. It's John on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, John. I'm listening to all these people, and I, and I can't help but wonder, whatever happened to professional courtesy? I work in a big pest control company. I have clients that are actors, actresses, sports figures, radio hosts, all sorts of things. I have access to these people's homes, their personal information, their credit card, their phone number, their cell phone number, their address. And I wouldn't dream of doing anything with any of this stuff. This is their life, their personal information. You would be amazed how many people look up that information and then try to use it. I mean, I I've spent years building a reputation with my customers. I know them by first name basis. Some of them, we have play dates with our kids. Do you, do you know, I want, I want to tell you something. Do you know that uh, when I lived in Laurel Canyon uh, about 15, 16 years ago, I got uh, a package in my mailbox from somebody who said to me that uh, they they knew who I was and that their daughter played the tuba. And if I ever had a need for somebody who plays the tuba, that I should give them a call. Interesting. I swear it's true. How, why would you make yeah. up something as mundane as that? Like, yeah. And, of course, you know, we're always exposing new talent on the Tom Likas show. That's what we do. Yeah. <laughs> always. Yes. But yeah, it's like, why would you even step beyond that line? They're trusting you with their, their life, their information. They, they, pulling. Well, because I think a lot of people who have these jobs say to themselves, I'm not going to be this forever. What do I care? Yeah. But, I mean, professional credit, I mean, how to everybody out there, how would you like it if somebody started giving out your personal information? Well, I'm sure everybody would hate it. I know it's been done to me, and I know I hate it. John, I thank you. Our email address, tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.